retired master gunner sergeant, Carol W. Braxton. Most of my tour of duty was split between Cambridge, June, North Carolina, and the Pacific, and California, Camp Pendleton, California. But something different I noticed as a young boy in Manassas, Virginia, that the Marines from Quantico came to Manassas on Liberty, and I would see them like Saturday night as a little boy. And then when I grew up in high school, we were notified that the Marine Corps was going to accept black Marines. The only branch of the military that had not uh, been integrated was the Marine Corps. And uh, the interesting thing is in American history, it's African Americans participated in every war from the American Revolution. So three of us decided we would volunteer. This was in March of 1943. Marine Corps has two recruiting depots, one in Paris Island and one in San Diego, and we couldn't go to either one. We left Manassas on a bus to go to Richmond, Virginia to be examined. It's the 4th of June. That's when we reported into Camp de June. But it was Montfort Point inside of Camp de June. They had this special camp set up for just Black Marines. When we got to the main gate, they took us off the bus and they said some pretty harsh words to us at the main gate. And I never forget, I had a hat on. And this big drilling, big D, I guess it was the MP, reached up and grabbed my hat and threw it on the ground and stomped on it and said, you so-and-so, you won't need this hat anymore. And I never saw that hat again. Boot camp was 11 weeks. And it was really harsh, hard, hard, hard treatment that they gave to us. Just like we wasn't human. For example, the barracks we lived in were prefabricated huts. There wasn't barracks, there were huts. And this was leftover barracks from the CC camp which was Civilian Conservation Corps. It rained outside, it rained inside. And then we were near swamps, snakes, and rats. Dust dark, we would go down by, or they would take us by the uh, swamp and make us stand out of attention and let the mosquitoes sting us and do what they wanted to. And we couldn't, do anything but just twist your nose and maybe shake a little bit. One day, the colonel called us out and he started calling out names. I'm pretty sure there was about 30 of us or more. So he says, uh, I guess you men wonder why you all were called. So we said, yes, sir. And he said, you all were called to be drill instructors. I was still just 18. They isolated us for those 11 weeks and all they did was train us and fed us. We couldn't go to the movie on base. We couldn't leave our back. We couldn't go nowhere. I said to myself, no way I could treat another human being the way they treat me. My father, Corporal Thomas S. Turner, was a Montford Point Marine. But, you know, he never really talked that much about his experience until uh, President uh, Barack Obama signed the legislation for the Montford Point Marines to get a Congressional Gold Medal. And after that, he talked about it, and I asked him, well, Dad, why did you not tell us that much? He said he hated the time that he was in the Marines because he was treated so poorly. It was that point that the Marine Corps for Blacks wasn't supposed to be that this was a white Marine Corps. And we couldn't, they said that we wouldn't make it. We didn't belong in as Marines. The other uh, branches were actually integrated, but 
you know, African Americans were still treated poorly in all branches of the military. Uh, and in the case of the Montford Point Marines, you know, usually the officers were white. Marine Corps trained you so hard and so rough, you almost hate everything and everybody. But that's why some of the men didn't want to go home because they figured that they were so bad, if they, they would curse their mother. That's how, how bad they made us. And the Marine Corps just trained you so that you are the first to go into combat. We said that if the Tuskegee Airmen could go through what they went through, and then we even talked about slavery, of how the slaves came over here on the ships. And if they could stand, we don't know how many days it took them to come over here on those ships and endure such treatment, not only on the ships, but once they got here and how they were treated. Uh, there was uh, legalized segregation in the United States. And so um, African Americans were treated as second class citizens. And white supremacy was part of the very fabric of the United States. And so it operated, you know, like, how do you justify this? Always trying to prove that African Americans were inferior, which they were. And some of the things that our full parents went through that this was a test for us. Something they didn't want us to do. They didn't want us to be Marines and said we would never be Marines. I guess it stuck with us that we were going to do this. If it wasn't death, we were going to do it. Uh, they kept their dignity. Uh, they uh, band together uh, as brothers. And in life, I learned that oftentimes, you know, you could be the best and you might not get selected, but it's okay. You just keep doing the work and eventually it pays off. We were all around one afternoon and we heard all this noise. Sirens and everything just carrying on. So we just wondered what the world was going on, something happened. So here comes this great big convertible limo. We looked up, it was President Roosevelt. He said, men, I have a short speech to make. He said, you Marines have broken every record that these other Marines have set for years and years. As far as I'm concerned, you're just as good as any Marine that put that uniform on, sent them overseas. 